It's been a long time since I've been able to start out a review of a new graphics card without the caveat that global supply chain problems, semiconductor shortages, and a cryptocurrency boom made that review all but irrelevant because most people couldn't find a new graphics card or even afford one if they could. But Nvidia's new generation powerhouse, the GeForce RTX 4090, comes at a time when those problems are mostly behind us, and we can get back to marveling at ridiculously high frame rates at top-end but not absurdly outrageous prices. It feels good. I've spent the last week putting it through its paces, testing performance in both synthetic benchmarks and real-world gaming tests. It is a big fella, and it comes with an even bigger price tag, $1,599 to be specific. But when we're talking about a piece of gaming hardware capable of running something like Cyberpunk 2077 in 4K, with ray tracing, and at a frame rate that can actually take advantage of a 144Hz monitor, it's hard to argue that it isn't worth every penny. First up, we have to address the elephant in the room. That is, the RTX 4090 itself. This is a massive graphics card, roughly the same size as the equally huge 3090 Ti before it, taking up three slots in your case. It's heavy too, weighing just over five and a half pounds, but it is big and beautiful, with the same silver and black color scheme that debuted on Nvidia's 30 series cards two years ago. Nvidia's engineers have turned in an impressive spec sheet, even compared against the still awesome 3090 Ti. Let's dive into the raw numbers. It features 16,384 CUDA cores, up from 10,000 1,752 on the RTX 3090 Ti. It has a base clock of 2.23 GHz that boosts up to 2.52 GHz and 24 GB of GDDR6 VRAM, making it capable of 83 shader teraflops of compute power, up from 40 on the 3090 Ti, 1,321 tensor teraflops, up from 320, and 191 ray tracing teraflops, up from 78. Those are all huge jumps. However, as we've seen many times before, simply doubling the core or shader counts doesn't automatically mean that you'll see double the performance in games. In this case though, Nvidia has produced some substantial results, and the improvement I've seen in most of my tests is definitely more than just an incremental upgrade. This is a real generational leap forward. Starting off with our synthetic benchmarks, the 4090 didn't just arrive on the scene, it positively crashed through the wall like the Kool-Aid man hopped up on his own juice. In 3 d Mark Firestrike Ultra, the 4090 delivered an eye-watering score of 21,872. To put that in perspective, it's around 50% more than the RX 6950 XT score of 14,512, which was the best that we've recorded in-house up till now. It's also about on par with the previous overclocking world record for Firestrike Ultra, and that was for not just one, but two GPUs at once. Unigen Heaven tells the same story. The 4090 scored leaps and bounds ahead of every card we've ever tested, with an improvement of 26% at 1080p, 39% at 1440p, and 31% at 4K compared to the 3090 Ti. The ray tracing synthetics continue this trend, with the 4090 nearly doubling, and in some case, actually doubling, the scores of the 3090 Ti. These are some seriously impressive numbers. Moving on to our gaming benchmarks, the 4090 continues to dominate. Our standard four-game test suite consists of Borderlands 3, Gears Tactics, Metro Exodus, and Total War 3 Kingdoms. All tests are run at the highest available graphics preset with ray tracing and DLSS enabled, if available. Just as in the synthetic tests, the 4090 takes a considerable lead ahead of every other card we've tested across every game and resolution. Of course, it should. This is the top of the line card of a new generation, so only the 3090 Ti, which is the half-step upgrade over the 4090's generational predecessor, should even have a chance of staying competitive with the new card. Question is, how much of a lead does the 4090 jump out to? Looking at a wider selection of games, specifically at 4K, the 4090 holds a large margin over the 3090 Ti, ranging from a 14% improvement in Metro Exodus all the way up to a 90% margin in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. That means frame rates all around or above 100 FPS. And remember, this is at 4K, max settings, with ray tracing turned on. Again, those are some seriously impressive numbers. The 4090 undoubtedly owes some of its success to NVIDIA's continued improvements to DLSS, or D 
deep learning super sampling. That's the AI-enabled tech that lets games render at a lower resolution, in this case 1440p, but still output 4K with visual quality that is nearly indistinguishable from native 4K. Early versions of DLSS came with some sacrifices in fidelity due to the AI upsampling residue happening behind the curtain, but the tech has since advanced now to a point where games look as good, if not better, when you're using DLSS than when you're not. The latest version, DLSS 3, is exclusive to the 40 series cards, but it offers a new feature that literally generates frames by itself. There's an extremely technical explanation on NVIDIA's site if you're interested, but in short, the GPU looks at two sequential frames, calculates the differences between them, and then uses its AI chops to generate a frame in between them. As of now, I've only had a chance to test DLSS 3 in a single game, Cyberpunk 2077, but I'll have a more detailed analysis in our written review on IGN.com. Keep it locked. Anyway, what you're seeing on screen is Cyberpunk 2077 running at 4K resolution with max settings, again, including ray tracing. It's actually tricky to measure because the in-game FPS counter doesn't accurately record the generated frames, so I used NVIDIA's Frame View tool to record my benchmark runs. With DLSS disabled, the 4090 scored 41.9 FPS in Cyberpunk's in-game minute-long benchmark. With DLSS enabled, but frame generation turned off, the score jumped up to 84 FPS. With frame generation on, an incredible 136 frames per second, while still, as you can see, looking absolutely magnificent. Now, frame generation does come with a slight trade-off, which is that since the GPU is generating additional frames, it introduces a tiny bit of latency as it inserts those frames into the stream. This latency was imperceptible to me in the bit of Cyberpunk that I played with frame generation turned on, but that might not be the case in other games, and it might be more problematic in fast twitch esports games where every millisecond counts. Still, playing a game as visually demanding as Cyberpunk at 4K with ray tracing at frame rates in excess of 120 is truly impressive. The final piece of the puzzle is, of course, price. Typically, new graphics card generations launch with the top end of what I'd consider the mainstream cards, in NVIDIA's case, the 3080, 2080, and 1080 of generations past. This time, though, it's the 4090 that's the first to arrive, meaning I only have the previous generation as a point of comparison. And while we know how the 4080 will be priced, $1,199 for the 16 gig variant and $899 for the 12 gig variant, it's impossible to know how these cards will perform until we've had a chance to test them for ourselves. So, of course the 4090 is going to blow everything else out of the water. It's the enthusiast level card of a brand new generation. But is it a good value? That remains to be seen. Still, comparing to everything else you can buy right now, including the 3090 Ti, its numbers are impressive, and that card only just launched earlier this year and with a retail price of $2,000, though it has since seen its price drop to as low as $1,100 on sale. I said before that the 4090 holds a lead of at least 15 and up to 90% over the 3090 Ti at 4K. Considering those numbers, a price premium of 45% over the former King doesn't seem so bad. The RTX 4090 may be huge and expensive, but holy smokes if it doesn't blow the competition out of the water. That is a little unfair because it's currently the only card of this new generation that's available, so we only have cards from the past few years to compare it to. But until the rest of the pack can catch up, even the $1,599 price doesn't seem unreasonable for the unrivaled frame rates that this card can crank out between its impressive hardware specs and its DLSS3 AI wizardry. For more on NVIDIA's new generation of 40 series graphics cards, keep it right here on IGN.